You know, this week, this week I was looking at these two young adults, young, young, young guys, and they were shocked because they had read this study by this Japanese uh, scientist who had done these tests on water. If yeah, you've you've seen that before, those flash freeze that when the, he would play beautiful Mozart or Beethoven, all these gorgeous crystals and colors would appear, all the colors of the rainbow, beautiful shapes. And then he tested it with uh, some like angry music. <laughs> I'm not gonna say the style because some of you may love it. But um, then everything would be distorted, no colors. Everything was just, uh, you know, un, un not, not beautiful, didn't look created. It was just kind of thrown in there. And so he then started to test it with words. So that's what these young, young men were shocked about because they said he was testing it with words. And first he was saying these like mean things. I hate you, water. You're ugly. You're disgusting and all these things. And then he, he had frozen those flash freeze and again, just the same effect as the horrible music. <laughs> there was no colors and just horrible shapes, nothing beautiful. But then he would say to the water, I love you. You are created for me. You're beautiful. You're refreshing. I love you. And then all of a sudden, come on, he would flash freeze it and all the colors of the rainbow. Come on now. Every beautiful crystal, this kind of stuff you'd want to hang in your Christmas tree, appear, beautiful shapes. You know, the world is confused about these things. Well, the world all over is confused because you cannot know who you really are until you know your maker, until you know who God is. And he didn't only make you, but he made you in his very image and you're like him. Come on. And his likeness. So that when this Japanese man spoke to the water, he was behaving like God. Come on. He spoke and it was. Whatever he spoke, it was. I want you to know that you and I are to be like God. Come on. I, I, have, uh, I know many people, we all have a default set. Some of us, we wake up, this is an opportunity, this is the fun day, woohoo, it's raining, I love the smell, whatever. And then another person's set is, ugh, I gotta get up, gotta do the grind, gotta get to work, ah, it's raining again, you know. And so I want you to know that if you're like God, your set, default set, is joy and i can prove it through the word of god come on i want you to change your mind even as i'm declaring scripture i'm imparting these things come on into you because it is the truth hebrews 1 verse 9 talks about jesus and what the father said about him you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness therefore god your god has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. Now, he's saying, because you act like me, you love righteousness and you hate wickedness. I'm pouring my, my joy, come on, from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Drip, drip, drip. I want that to happen even as I speak this now over you, that throughout this week, you would feel the oil of gladness the joy of the Lord, come on, not because of circumstances, not because of happenings, but because you know whose you are and you're created in the image and the likeness of God. God is a powerful God. He brings change in just a moment. Come on. I remember when he healed me of something horrible in just a flash of a second, I was instantly made whole. I've seen this growing up in my whole family. My brother had crossed eyes, severe crossed eyes. He was born that way. God in one moment straightened out those eyes. Come on now. My sister was born with so many defects, heart condition and other organs. 
They said that she would never have children. When she was little, they did all these scans on her. And, you know, they, they were just so sad for my mother. Come on, but my mom was a new believer. My dad was a new believer. And they believed God's word. And every day when she would go to bed, they would say, thank you, Jesus, for healing her. Thank you for healing Linda from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. She, she was called back in for another x-ray, and they were perplexed. Come on now. Because not only was her heart condition completely healed, she had no more purple lips. Every other organ was healed as well. Isn't that amazing? We serve a powerful God. Come on. And in one moment, he can change your default setting. Come on now. I, it, things may have happened. Trauma may have happened. Come on, finances may not be the greatest right now. Whatever's going on, God is saying, be like me. I'm pouring my olive gladness on you today. So today I want to talk to you about an, another aspect of this summer bod. And I'm calling this message today, God stories. God stories. You know, it's important that the story of the Lord continues. I was... I have a, I have, you know, we have a, a podcast kind of talk show, and one of my guests, you know, I, I some people on the on that are like liked, and some people that are not liked, and so I get I hear about all of them, and most time I hear about when I really hear from someone, I hear how they don't like it, and so this guy to this week said, you know, um, the. Christianity is nothing but, is fundamentally just storytelling. And I wrote back, I said, yes, his story. And he said, you are full of, and then he goes off and he tells me all kinds of other stuff. And, you know, because I'm interviewing a, a demon slayer, one of the guys, that's, his title is demon slayer. And uh, he says, you and this demon slayer, blah, 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 you guys are full of S. And everything inside of me started to say, you're full of. <laughs> My, I have to always bring the man of God back up. I mean, just, just sometimes he just wants to sit down and then let the warrior speak and then uh, repent of it later. But, you know, there's a realization is that, and I said, but fundamentally Christianity is stories and we need to be people that are okay with the fact that some people think that all you have is a story yeah but I, but the fact is is we have a story i said yes his story followed by or proven with evidence a story without evidence is just another fable it's a it's another thing. I can go to any religion or any concept. I can go to the concept of most science and find that it's just a simple story. The missing link is a story. The, the idea that we can be created out of some boiling pot of garbage in mud. <laughs> and then all of a sudden get legs and heart and brain. And it's not pro progressively. Why, 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 why just us? That to me has to be a significant signature. I mean, I have garbage in my backyard at one point when we had a little pond back there. And I didn't do anything and the fountain wasn't working. And the things that crawled out of that were not human. They could not build a house. <laughs> stuff formed in there. Mosquitoes landed. Stuff found formed in there. Right? Little frogs came jumping out of it, but they weren't building anything. They weren't having conferences or how to come out. There was no gatherings. It's amazing. Well, it's going to take a million years. I don't have that long. It's amazing how fast I can grow, and it takes them that long to grow into something that can talk back to me. I want you to go and take out my garbage. You're taking up room in my backyard. Go take my garbage out. See? You guys, so it's like it's silly, but that's just a story. Why do you believe that story? Well, science, is pro science isn't proven anything. That's why you still have a link that's missing. <laughs> a 
People don't fall in love because of facts. They fall in love because of a story. They dream of a story that they want to be a part of, and they dream of that story going together, and they dream of what people are going to say. It's all about a story. So I want us to know that God wants us to live with God's stories. John chapter, John chapter 12, verse 9, and this is one of the reasons I believe that, that I'll, 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 I'll prove it more as we get into this subject. So here we see in, La, in John chapter 12, in the moment, Lazarus is dead in John chapter 11. How many of you know that? Part of scripture, he's dead. His family members are crying. His sisters are like, he's dead. He's, he's going to be stinking about this time. And Jesus comes and he raises Lazarus from the dead. I mean, what an amazing story. Lazarus gets risen from the dead. We see, you know, people then turn the whole thing about, oh, Jesus cried for him. But he was so great crying. He loved him so much. But the story was this guy just came out of the grave, people. The guy came out of the grave. All right, so this is an incredible thing. We get to chapter 12, verse 9. And now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there, Jesus, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priest plotted to put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him, many Jews went away and believed in Jesus. We believe that, G that people want to come to church because of Jesus. But can I tell you that people should come to church because of you? That, that this scripture here, to me, is the fact that people were coming to see Lazarus and not see Jesus. And I believe that we've made the church all about coming to see Jesus when I think people should come to hear your God story. They should come and see your God story. They should come and encounter your God story. That w the church that I would love to see is that from week to week, we would walk in with God stories. That today I need to take you to lunch because I need to tell you a God story. I heard that you're going through something. So I need to take you to lunch today. Oh, wait. You guys are not paying attention anymore. I, need, I, I heard you're going through something, so I'm going to take you to lunch today. Why? Because I need, you to tell, I need to tell you a God story. I need to tell you how God did that thing that you're believing for. He did it for me. I need to tell you how God worked it out for me. And if he can work it out for me, he can work it out for you. How many of you believe that we can have a church where people don't just come to church for Jesus, but they come to church because you also have a story to tell about Jesus, that how Jesus has set you free, how Jesus has saved you, how Jesus has healed your body, how Jesus has transformed your life. I want you to know the body needs to serve each other by their stories. Can we read it again? Verse 9 says, and now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there. They knew that Jesus was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only. I think that what we're missing in church is because I was sharing. I shared with some of, my, some of the leaders in the staff. I said, people will not come to church because they want to hear me anymore. They're not coming to church because we just have incredible worship. They may if we expect, if we wrap all of that with God's story. Because somehow it has to be a connection of what does the preaching have to do with me and what does the worship have to do with me if I'm living in my state. We have to be able to bring them out of their state. But in order to do that, we need to wrap what we do with God's story. God's story needs to be ro ro just ro roaming around this room where everywhere we turn, some miracles happening, some miracles breaking through. I had a breakthrough in my finance. I had a breakthrough in my marriage. I had a breakthrough in my life. I had a breakthrough in my job. I had a breakthrough in my city. I had a breakthrough with a family member that is safe. I had a breakthrough through. And then when you have that going on, you will see that God's stories will begin to attract people because they need to come to the house of God and they need to hear something refreshing, something encouraging, something breakthrough. They're not going to come because I'm preaching. They're not going to come because of our worship. They're going to experience that, but they're going to come because they need to hear a God story. They came simply because Lazarus was a God story. 
Yeah, they knew Jesus was there, but we want to go and see Lazarus. It was so bad that the Jews said that we need to kill Lazarus. Not only Jesus, we need to kill this Lazarus because his story is so incredible, many people are believing. How many of you have a story that's so incredible that people will begin to believe? Is anyone in this room, you have a story that... If not, we need to become a church. The reason we want to pray on Tuesday for men is because I, I've been saying, I've been saying, I asked our men, how many of you got to have a, a God story? How many of you have a testimony? How many of you have something that God's doing? The, you know, the, the, the thing that made our online influencers work, someone said, how'd you get online influencers to work? We've been trying to get online to work. I said, every week when we open up the, when we open up the, the video, the first thing we ask is, who has a win? Who's winning? And then the winning became an energy for other people to win. And then I remember over and over people saying, I've been waiting. I don't, I've don't. been waiting for a win so I could share my win. I want to have a church where we come. Every week we're going, who's winning? Who's winning? Is there anybody in the house that's winning? And every week we're sharing about how we're winning. A church that's winning is a growing church. A church that's not winning is not a growing church. I don't want to be a hospital. I want you to get healed at home and come and share your God story here and find someone that is here that is hurting and take them to lunch, take them to breakfast, take them somewhere this week and help that God story get them to win at home. We all come to church to win here. I want us to tell God stories here and I want you to go and win at home. I don't know, but that church is not giving me a breakthrough. I'm not getting fed no more. Maybe. You... See, if you, if you can take what's being taught you will, and you can apply it, you will get a God story and you will have been fed. I love when someone can tell a story and they, they're like, they can actually give me the feeling and the image and the emotion and the, re the reason is now pictures in my head. And I'm like, shoot, can I meet him? But because you don't have a story, you have a Roman's road to salvation. And you know every scripture. But it doesn't mean anything to people. It's like reading the no newspaper and repeating it to me. It means nothing. I believe that the, serve, the way we serve the body is we need to have stories for the body. Yeah. Hebrews 10, 23 says, 24 says this, let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good work. So I should be maybe on Friday, Thursday, Friday, thinking of my how to formulate what breakthroughs have happened for me this week so I can tell the story. You know, so on Saturday mornings, we get together with our influencers and we still open it up with the same thing. We, anyone got any wins? I was like, well, I'm working on some. Let's tell us about what you're working on. It's not a full-blown win. It's, and some say, it's a little win. I'm like, give me a little win. Because you don't know what I walked through this week. Your little win is better than what I've been walking through. And I need to hear it. I need to hear your little win. Whatever little thing, you getting a little breakthrough? You getting some breakthrough here? Let me hear about it. Well, some, some say, well, I'm, we're working on something. But I'm like, working on something is better than not working on something. Give me that win. So on Thursday night, Friday night, I'm thinking about it. What's going on? What are we going to say? I would love to hear or see Citadel Church. Wednesday night, you maybe just start jotting down some things that you can share with people on Sunday. Just start writing it down. You know, I just, what, what had God done for me this from Wednesday to Wednesday? Just writing it down. If you have to put in bullet points, that's fine, but it would be great if you could actually write it out as a story. This week I walked into work and there was someone there and they were I could just tell when I walked in that they were down. But I walked over to them and I said, hey, I'm going to get a cup of coffee. Would you like to go get a cup of coffee with me? 
And then they said yes. And then we went over and we got a cup of coffee. And as I sat down, something just took over them that they started to just pour their heart out to me. I didn't have to tell them anything. They just poured their heart out to me. They told me the story of their pain. And then I was able to go back into my life and take the story of pain that God brought me out in and tell them that story. And they said, I want to know how to live that kind of life. And I was able to lead them to the Lord. And that's why I wrote this story down for you today. Wouldn't that be great to come armed on Sunday mornings? Why are you going to church? Because I got a story to tell. Why are you going to church? Because I got a story to hear. We need to be a church where there's a story to be heard or a story to be told. I need to hear something today. I need to hear something. Don't just stay at home and just flow as you're listening to me over here on the other side, just flipping, 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 and flipping, and flipping. The reason we flip so much on the Instagram is because we're trying to find a story that's going to make us laugh, that's going to encourage us, that's going to build us. That's why they took them out of the post and they put them on top so that you can get a quick story. Because people are looking for stories. What's going, what's good? Someone texted me the other day on Thursday. They said, what's good? I said, I'll talk to you tomorrow. I got some good to tell you. I had to work out what was good so I could talk to them the next day. I couldn't take the phone call right then. (laughs) But when someone calls, texts you, said, what's good? They need some encouragement. They need to be built up. They need to be strengthened. I can't go, oh, you know, nothing's good. No, I need to get on the phone with something's good. Because they're texting me because they need something to be good. Can you live a life that's for someone else? Can you live a life that's robust, that's full of life, that's full of joy, that's full of energy, that's breaking through? Because you know someone else is going to need your story. Someone's going to need your breakthrough. Someone's going to need your health. Someone's going to need your healing. Someone needs your story. And if we know my story, your story serves the kingdom. God will start to look at Citadel Church and go, oh, they are the ones. They're not shutting up my story. They're talking. They're blabbermouths. Oh, let me give them some more breakthroughs because they can't help but say. Blabbermouths. Maybe I should call this blabbermouths. I think, I think, I realize that sometimes we wait for the full breakthrough. And I think sometimes we need to talk about the journey and how we can enjoy the journey, even though the journey's tough. But people see you live in that story. I mean, the Lord was challenging me this week. He's like, Tracy, you're working on so many projects, but you don't share any of them. I'm like, Yeah, because I I want to just share the victory. But did you have victory in it yesterday? Yeah, I did. Because I went from not knowing something to knowing something. It was like, well, how how come you don't tell people that? Because that's what people need to see. People need to see that, that you went from not knowing something to knowing something. And maybe the story was should have started when you were like, I don't know something, people, but I need to know something. And so I'm seeking God. I'm working on this. And then the next day I'm telling another story. The next day I'm telling another story. It's amazing that the, you know, I don't look a, a lot at our social media in our church because I don't, I don't, I don't want to just know about food. I want to know about the interesting life you're living. All right. So that's, in the, so, I mean, we, we could be a lot more social media savvy as an organization, as a church. Hebrews 10, 24, let us consider one another. Let us, uh, do you actually consider one another? Or you just consider, who are you considering? Thankfully, you put on the other one today, thank you. That's very considerate. I truly, truly appreciate it. That was a consideration. Thank you. You brushed your teeth. But let us 
Isn't that a corporate gap? That's a, that's a us. Let us see us. And then as we are us, consider one. So considering one is not until you consider us. Let us consider one another. So I can actually think better about the one when I know that we're a unit. But if I consider myself to be myself, by myself, all in this myself, then I don't actually know how to consider you. Because I'm already considering one. But I have to first consider the unit. How are we doing as a church? How are we doing as a people? You know, I look, sometimes I look around my family and I'm, just, and I'm like, how are we doing this? In my mind, I'm thinking, how are we doing as a family? And then that allows me to look at the, sing, the singular individual and go, now I'm praying for this one. Because I felt like as a unit, the one stands out maybe needing a little bit more of something. Peter is, at the end, Jesus is raised from the dead. And Jesus says, hey, to the disciples, go and tell my disciples. Then he says, and Peter. Go and tell my disciples. So he's thinking about the unit. But he knew that there was one that needed a little special extra attention. Because if you don't think about the unit, you'll never know the one that is standing out the most that needs the most attention. So we come to church and all you think about is an individual self. Then you'll miss the fact that there was someone that you were sitting next to that week that was really contemplating some terrible things. See. I think we can destroy selfishness by being unified in our, if I can think bigger about the whole thing. I think the problem with our organization of the, as the world, the United States, is that we have, we, have dis, we have divisions that are singular. 